Hi! In this video, we will learn how to write the most complicated Chinese character. How many strokes does it take to write the most complicated character? Let's find out. Fifty-six strokes. That's a lot of strokes. This character is pronounced biang, and it's used in this word, biang biang mian, which is a type of flat and wide noodle that is popular in the Shanxi province of China. Trying to memorize how to write a character like this may seem intimidating, but it can be easy and intuitive once you understand what you're looking at. And we will do that with the help of this book. Enjoy learning Chinese characters. Chinese characters are pictographic, which means that the writing symbolizes ideas and objects rather than the pronunciation. But this doesn't look like noodles, does it? Well, instead of trying to remember 56 meaningless strokes, let's break it down into nine smaller characters called radicals. Radicals are the basic Chinese characters that combine together to write more complex ones. Let's see how the radicals in biang might relate to noodles. First, at the top, we have a roof, and then two strokes describing an entrance. This character means cave, but it can be used to describe any kind of shelter with a roof and an entrance, like maybe a small noodle shop. Next, we have a character that means speech or word, but what you're really drawing is the shape of a tongue, which we use to talk and say words. A tongue would also help to taste the noodles. The next character on each side means small. This is represented by drawing some thread or string that is twisted into a bundle. This is more visible when looking at the ancient version of the character. Below the bundles of string, we have a character that means long or grow. This may be a little hard to see at first, but if you look at the ancient character, what you're really drawing is a person with long hair. And guess how noodles are made? By elongating strings of dough. Now in the middle, we will draw a horse. First, you draw the neck, then the mane, then the body and tail, then the four legs. Can you see the horse? This is how some people probably got to the noodle shop. The next character is a simplified depiction of a heart. The ancient character shows the muscles of an anatomical heart, but when used with other characters, it describes an emotion. Food not only gives us energy, but also makes us feel good and happy. Now we draw a character that usually means moon, but when used with other characters, it can be a variation of this character. This depicts a slab of meat which would be a great topping on a bowl of noodles. Then we have a character depicting a blade of a knife. This could actually be a knife, or it could be describing the noodle's unique shape, which is flat and wide like the blade of a knife. And last but not least, we have a character that means walk or go, which is depicted by someone walking on a long road, maybe to where the noodle shop is. And now you know how to write biang. The actual meaning of biang is unclear, and it's not even in the modern dictionary. So what was the point of learning to write it? Trying to learn how to write all the Chinese characters may seem like a daunting task. But by learning biang, you already learned how to write nine characters. Do you remember what this character is? How about this one? You will find that the characters that are quickly memorable are the ones that are easily understandable. And you will see that the complex characters are just a combination of the easy ones. If you want to learn Chinese characters quickly and intuitively, you can get this book, Enjoy Learning Chinese Characters, with the link in the description below. I hope you enjoyed learning how to write Biang with me, and if you did, please like, comment, and subscribe. Have a good day or good night, and thanks for watching.